So I'm back for part four of this massive tutorial. I saw the last part was over 80 minutes. Ugh. Well, I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly then because then we're already over 100 minutes in total. Um, what I want to do now for the last part is show you how easily you could uh, transfer this technique to uh, expand upon it. Uh, if you can know how to create one list, you can create any kind of list that you want. So if you've seen like Diablo type games, uh, some games have like a character selection where you see the character in front of you and you can hit left and right and it will scroll and you will see maybe three characters, one of them is a bit in front of the other or something like that. And you could do that extremely easily when you have this list already set up. Of course, you might need to adjust the UI, place one button on the left side of the screen, one on the right side, and fix the camera angle. But I'm just going to do a very basic one here. So we have five, we actually have five units, positions, list positions, so let's just Let's just do something like a triangle thing. There we go. Uh, point, the point nines are fine, except that I want them to be in order. Of course, you will need to uh, adjust the... Um, um, scrolling... Uh, the scrolling a bit so that you can go to the very end of the list or something like that but it's easy enough I'm just gonna do the basics for you the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this map as uh, a different name continued something so that uh, if people don't see this part they don't get the full map All right so we have five points here uh, I'm not going to bother with the camera. I'm just going to go back into the trigger editor. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the dialog to the left side of the screen so we can see a bit what's going on. Um, second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array in here of points. Just like we have this item buttons, we're going to have the item points and it's going to be a point there we go going to go into the initialize and um, where we after we create the buttons I'm just going to set up the points here so new element set variable so we have to do this manually because can't really loop through it easily. Point number one equals point one, two, three, four, five. All right, so two equals point two, three, four. in five uh, maybe I'm also gonna go back into the data editor and I'm gonna create a spawn point just so we don't get any random units popping up on top of this spawn point okay so I'm going back to the trigger editor in the callback create unit at point one point so I don't have them popping up on top of my beautiful scroll. Spawn point. All right. So in the update list, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove all units at the spawn point area. I'm going to go back into the editor here and I'm going to create a region. It's so going to go to regions and just create a region I'm going to go to view here points so 
so that we can see the points while we're editing regions. There, and yeah, what should we name it? Uh, uh, showcase, region, whatever. Back in here, and so in the update, kill all units. Remove. Actually, I'm not going to do kill because then we get blood on the ground. Remove units. Uh, we're going to have to do um, four each unit. Never, ever, 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 ever use pick unit inside or pick integer or anything inside that action uh, because if you do you will get bugs uh, basically pick the equivalent of four this uh, pick each integer player or unit they only have the possibility to store one unit at a time across all active functions so say you have pick each unit here and then you call another action that also uses pick each unit or pick each integer. When it comes back here, it will still have the value that it was set to inside the sub function and stuff like that. Just don't, don't use it. Use for each, always. Just get used to using for each everywhere. Remove, and then we just take the unit. So we remove the unit from the game. And in here, here we set the thingy, so we're going to create a unit, uh, which is obviously going to be under unit, with default facing. Obviously, I don't actually know which way this is going to face, but hey, let's go for it. Unit um, Alright, now we're going to have to do uh, one of two things Either we're going to have to hook this into the unit library or we're going to have to fill in the units here as well and at this point is when you start thinking, hmm, maybe I should just uh, instead of filling a list like this, maybe I should just hook it directly into the other thing, which is what I'm going to do now to show you the alternative way. So I'm just going to make a selection and dialog, get unit type, which is going to be a function, and return type, unit type. Inside it, we're going to have a switch, and we're going to switch depending on Preset player ID there, and if it is equal to the hero list, we're gonna get the unit from the hero list. So we're gonna go to uh, we don't actually have a get function for the hero, do we? Oh, yes, we do return function. Hero get unit type hero ID is gonna be our 